Hey everybody, this is Yana Collins and welcome back to Oz Living Hour here in Singapore for the Token 249. And joining me here is the founder and chief scientist of Definity. So Dominic Williams, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. All right, so tell me about your company and what are some of the latest news and developments coming from Definity? What advancements are you most excited about? Well, the Definity Foundation continues to work as always to improve the internet computer blockchain, which is the world's first world computer which can um, host almost any online system or service completely on a blockchain uh, without any need for cloud computing services. So. And now, how do you position yourself in the current market condition? And what are some innovative potential and also your contribution to the maturity of the space? Well, you know, the, the internet computer ecosystem has a, a very large and fast-growing developer ecosystem. And I think um, as we sort of approach a bear market, um, that developer ecosystem will grow ever faster. So in a um, bull market, you, you can profit, if you like, by chasing hype and um, market um, gyrations. But as the froth subsides, um, people are gonna look for technical substance. So developers need long-term strategy and to really think about how to build the best decentralized product possible. And today, um, there's only one blockchain that allows developers to build an entirely decentralized system that, for example, uses smart contracts to serve the uh, interactive web experience to users. There's only one blockchain in the world that can host, for example, a mass market uh, social network. Mm -hmm. So I think increasingly as uh, um, markets subside a bit, we're gonna see um, that internet developer growth increasing. And this industry has grown tremendously over the past couple of years. I think COVID accelerated that growth as well. And so how would you evaluate the relevance of your project in this stage of the crypto and blockchain industry? I mean, it's, it's, it's the same. I mean, um, I think anyone interested in crypto um, needs to find out more about the internet computer. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, just in this month, it's gaining three new superpowers. One of them um, allows smart contracts on the internet computer to um, move tokens on other blockchains and evoke smart contracts on other blockchains without bridges, okay, using something called chain key crypto. So for example, um, people are now able to create native Bitcoin DeFi mm -hmm. that actually directly operates on the Bitcoin ledger using internet computer smart contracts. Um, people are able to create decentralized custody solutions which can compete with centralized custody solutions. Um, people are able to create DEXs where the tokens remain on their native chains, but the exchange happens in internet computer smart contracts. Um, recently, uh, I think the, the, another feature came out called HTTPS outcalls, which enables smart contracts to securely call out into the Web2 ecosystem through consensus. So you can now directly integrate uh, smart contracts-based systems on the internet computer with the broader pre-existing old Web2 ecosystem. Um, that, that also enables you to, for example, do away with things like trusted oracles. You don't need an oracle to give you price feeds. Your smart contracts can reach out directly, for example, to exchanges and pull in the price feeds mm -hmm. from there. We also have um, innovations uh, just launching in decentralized fundraising, and um, w which I think is going to be very important for developers in the ecosystem as venture capital subsides a bit. All right. And now on to the main key theme for this space, which is sustainability. What is your biggest contribution for the sustainability of this space? Well, look, it's simple. Um, the internet computer is hundreds of thousands of times more efficient than pre-existing blockchains. Okay. And that results from us running for years the blockchain industry's largest R&D operation. So um, one of the little known facts about uh, Definit the Definity Foundation and the Internet Computer Project generally, is the Definity Foundation runs the world's largest cryptography research operation. We have more well-known cryptographers working in the Definity Foundation than any organization in, in tech generally. And actually within, within blockchain is surprising, even though it's the crypto industry, most blockchain projects don't employ any cryptographers at all. But um, we've lent into um, cryptography and other forms of um, 
advanced computer science for many, many years. And by re-architecting blockchain and using things like new cryptography, we've driven the efficiency to incredible heights. And actually, one of the ambitions of the internet computer, um, which is designed as a world computer, um, is to not only completely replace traditional IT, mm -hmm. like cloud computing services, with a public network, but also to reduce the CO2 emissions associated with traditional IT. And I think when you look at the climate change uh, problems that are emerging in the form of um, extreme weather and melting ice and things like that, I think everyone in the block blockchain industry needs to think about the climate emissions that their use of these platforms creates. And now talking about your keynote speech and not to mention you're also part of an interesting panel um, talking about Web3 infrastructure. So just to give our viewers a summary and highlight, what could you tell us about? Well, I, I, I think, um, you know, the public generally and, and to some extent the industry are still um, coming to um, terms with this big contradiction, which is that, you know, we have a lot of blockchains who say, you know, built on blockchain, XYZ, built on Solana, built on Avalanche, built on Near, built on Ethereum. And if you do a survey of the public, 99% mm -hmm. um, plus, and journalists, mm -hmm. and investors, believe that means these blockchains are providing decentralized compute platforms, and the services they're interacting with are actually built on those blockchains. But it's not true at all. Those services are built on Amazon Web Services. Ooh. And in fact, they're just using the blockchain to store some tokens and NFTs. Um, so it's kind of misleading advertising, and there's this massive um, misunderstanding as, as a result that's um, arisen with, within the um, industry and the wider public. So uh, the internet computer today is the only blockchain that enables you to build in a totally decentralized way because smart contracts are so much more efficient um, they can process HTTP requests and serve interactive web experiences directly to the user, mm -hmm. to, to end users. And because they're so efficient, you know, you can store massive amounts of data using smart contracts. Um, whereas on tr traditionally architected blockchains, um, you absolutely rely on typically cloud computing services to serve the user experience, store the data, and perform the vast majority of data processing. So um, I use my time on the panel just to, um, you know, try and um, uh, explain the differences. That's incredible. Well, it's really great to have you here at Token 249. And so what brings you here? And tell us, what is the potential that you see in the ASEAN market? And are there any expansion plans in the works? A absolutely. So um, we've all already got a large uh, ICP, you know, internet computer community here in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And Singapore's becoming a regional tech hub. Um, you can see um, people from all over flocking to Singapore. A lot of, uh, actually, our Chinese partners are rebasing, uh, relocating themselves here. Um, we already have a lot of node providers running internet computer node machines from uh, Singapore data centers. But talking about um, Southeast Asia more generally, it, it's got a very um, young population that are very interested in um, tech generally and crypto specifically. So. You know, a lot of the meetings I've been having here in Singapore are discussing, um, you know, efforts to incubate projects and, and, and just sort of bootstrap stuff um, right the way across Southeast Asia. We've, we've already got actually some there's, um, really cool projects coming out of the region, um, sometimes from digital nomads. So there's a project called Cubetopia, which is really incredible, and they're based in Bali. And they're actually a very large internet communi computer community in Bali. Oh. Yeah, so I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of uh, developer growth in Southeast Asia. Wow. Well, wonderful to have you here, Dominic. Thank you so much for talking with me. I really appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah.